Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today we are continuing the Harry Potter series, of course. Um, so I'm really excited because I like these movies, except for this one. So without further ado, let's start talking about Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix was released in 2007. It was written by Michael Goldenberg and directed by David Yates. This is the first of four movies um, in the Harry Potter, you know, eight movies that he will direct. I can't remember if he directed Fantastic Beasts, but I'm pretty confident he did. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty confident he did. Um, but I will be doing those, like, immediately after, and I do consider them Harry Potter Universe movies, but they aren't the original, you know, eight that are actually good. So, um, so this movie, you know, we pick up after Harry, after the awful events of the Goblet of Fire, uh, and, of course, we're visiting him in his fifth year of Hogwarts, and there's a lot of changes. Hagrid isn't there, and there's this mysterious new defense against the arch, dark arts teacher that is just kind of really mean, and awful, and abusive, um, and he, Harry almost gets expelled at the beginning of the year because he has to defend himself against a Dementor in front of Dudley, uh, but he gets to a hearing and he's able to talk himself out of that, and with Dumbledore's help, and Dumbledore himself is being mysterious by not looking or even talking to Harry. All of these make for a really great story, except for this movie's really not good. I try to keep my reviews separate from their other media, but, um, as you can see down there, I have, well, you can't really see it very well, but right, eh, Right there. That's my stack of Harry Potter books. Um, the... Okay. I thought, they were, I thought they were in the wrong order, but I was right. Um, so the issue with this being me not talking about it is that the book is one of my favorite books in the eight. I love this one so much. I can read it all the time. I love it very, very much. And this movie kind of ruins it for me because there's so much it misses and it changes. Wow, it looks really bad. Um, it changes... A lot. And, like, I think that most moviegoers might not realize it without reading the books. But, like, there's a lot that changes. Like, Dubby's even in the book quite a bit. Um, and he just isn't in the movie. And, and there's other things, too. And, and the one thing that keeps this movie going, I think, in my opinion, is the villain who, aside from, you know, of course, Voldemort, is Umbridge, who is a awfully amazing villain. I think he's, she's worse than Voldemort. I hate her with a passion. And she's played by Imelda Staunton. Staunton? Staunton. Hard to pronounce. Um, she is fantastic in this movie. Like, really, really, really good. In the worst way. Because I really hate her character with, like, so much passion and heart that, like, it could explode. I hate her so much. She does such a fantastic job here. And quite honestly, that's one of the very few redeeming qualities of this film. Aside from the really cool battle at the end and the really deep emotional issues that come along with that battle, there isn't a whole lot that happens in this movie. We kind of banter along as if it's a regular you know, Harry Potter movie, but the tension seems... The tone is the problem. Okay, when you're reading the book, a lot of the tone kind of feels like it's just another year at Hogwarts, because it is just another year at Hogwarts for them, right? They're like, okay, you know, Voldemort's back, but there's nothing we can really do about that. And the tone in the fifth book, for the most part, up until the last little bit, is pretty sweet and, like, happy. And, like, you know, they're, they're finally happy. Harry's, you know, teaching a bunch of students defense against the dark arts, and it's really great. And the tone of the book is, you know, optimistic. And here, the tone just always seems like it's, like, on edge. Like, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. We're like, we know, but, like, not right now, right? I feel like a lot of this film could have been filmed with more of an optimistic and happier tone that might have made the whole movie better. One thing that I also want to comment upon is that this is the longest book in the eight-book saga. But the shortest... Well, seven-book saga, sorry. But the shortest movie in the eight movie saga, which does not correlate very well, right? <clears throat> uh, to put this into perspective, The Hobbit <laughs> The Hobbit is about a uh, little under a fourth of this book. A little over a fourth of this book. In terms of length. And The Hobbit was turned into three movies. And this book got one movie. And that's the issue, I think, with a lot of media being transported into film, you know? If you're going to take a book and put it into film, 
to what extent can one book be put into one film? This book could have been put into two films, Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix Part 1 and Part 2. And honestly, I think it would have been better with that because we could have added so much more that happens in the book. And the tones could be completely different. We could have had Part 1 and Part 2 be completely tonally different. The issue is that the climax, there's only one real climax in the book, and that is at the very end. And that is a very big tonal shift. And we can't really have that tonal shift in the middle of the movie because it just won't make sense. So they make the tonal shift at the end of the book because it makes sense. It's the end, right? Something bad's going to happen, right? Whereas in the movie, most people go to a movie based on tone, right? I mean, this movie, they probably go because they've seen the first four. But, like, most of the time, when you go about doing this kind of thing, right? When you go about going to, like, check it to see if you want to see a movie. Look at the tone, right? Is it a comedy? Is it a horror? Is it a thriller? And a lot of times, they don't mix these kind of tones. You can't have a horror comedy. They're great. I love them. But, like, not a lot of people understand them. And same here with this one, where it's kind of like this happy thriller, and like it doesn't quite make sense. They have to choose one, and they chose it with like the thriller kind of feel, which makes sense because it is kind of the beginning of the war saga part of Harry Potter. And I agree that the main tone maybe should be negative, but the book is very positive in the beginning, and I think that it kind of trips itself up here, and it kind of is like we have to make this super intense. Like, okay, cool. What happens? Like, kind of like nothing until very later. And it's, it's, I think, a mistake on David Yates' fault part. Um, uh, because the screenplay is actually pretty good. Like, I do like the writing quite a lot. Um, but the directing here is the issue with the tonal issues and, and just a lot of the main issues with this film is the tone. And I do blame that on Yates here. But overall, I mean, that's really all I kind of want to talk about here today with The Order of the Phoenix, but I do want to give you my final rating. And overall, again, it's not a bad movie, but it's certainly not very good. Um, definitely, definitely one of the worst of the series. And so I'm going to have to give Harry Potter and The Order of the Phoenix a C+. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. I want to know. I like hearing from you guys. Um, and, of course, probably a lot of you have seen Harry Potter, so let me know if you, what you guys think. Um, I will be releasing a ranked video in the beginning of August about all of these and all the books. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you guys are subscribing, 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 liking the video, sharing with your friends, and as always, keep watching movies and television, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.